Gracious Father, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for being a God of mercy and wonder, of grace and hope, and a God who shares with us the goodness that is found in you alone. We have gathered here because you have given us the promise that we are your children, forgiven in your grace, and strengthened by your spirit. So guide what we do, bring honor to your name, and uplift each and not every one here to serve you more fully. So we look to you as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, 
I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have never offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in his stead, by his command. I do forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Zechariah is one of the minor prophets. He's called a minor prophet because his book is not as long as the major prophets who wrote a lot more. One of the things that the minor prophets give us are concise and very precise kind of an understanding of issues or situations of the Messiah. And what it is doing is giving the people of Israel a clear sign of the Messiah being a little different than a military leader, but one who is going to come in a much humbler fashion. And so it is explained to us in this way. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humbled and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today, I declare that I will restore to you the double. <coughs> The epistle lesson is found in Romans, the seventh chapter, and begins with verse 14. Paul spends a great deal of time explaining to us um, the power of sin and the purpose of the law. One of the things that Paul reiterates and wants us to understand is how helpless we are in every category of life to grasp the wondrous truths of our God without the Spirit giving us that ability. And he goes to great lengths here to explain how confused he gets and how humble it makes him not being able to just even control his own behavior. It is a remarkably important text for all of us to understand when it comes to the grace of our God. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability carry it out. <laughs> For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being. But I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning is found in the 11th chapter of Matthew. It begins with verse 25. Jesus came to restructure how his people felt. And so, in order for them to understand what the gospel was going to be, he goes to great lengths to explain it. So as we are uh, waiting for the gospel lesson to be read, I do ask that you will sing. I have this in the plan. But I want you to stand while they are singing and <coughs> understand something. The Lord always tries to get us to flip our minds around to see and view life from His perspective. This morning, a part of that is what we're going to be singing. <coughs> I wanted it done right at this time. I did not forget. And so we will progress more. Please.
to say the peace of God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord gave us the privilege of being Americans. He chose a group of men. He led a group of men. Many women, many human beings, to stand up for what they understood was a principle of life worth fighting for, dying for. They spent a lot of time writing what's called a constitution that proclaimed right away that it was a God given right. They held God before each other. They held God as the central principle of everything that they had to proclaim. They made it very clear in all of their writings that if you do not have God at the center of your country, your country falls. They proclaim, we have three rights, three privileges. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness was never meant to from a context of doing what we want, when we want to do it, or whatever just makes us happy. It meant you were understanding that you lived under the grace of God and were forgiven. That you would have the right to worship and proclaim the name of a Savior. For we who are believers in our Lord, in his name, Jesus. These men, these individuals, understood a principle of life that is vital. The Lord is explaining this to us in the Gospel lesson. He has this little line in the, in the verse that says, I thank you, Father, for not giving this to the wise and intelligent, but to the young and the humble. What he was saying was, faith is not intellectual. It doesn't come because of a wisdom or an insight or because your mind works so well. It comes at a baptismal bond. God chooses to transform those who are sinners, their minds, their hearts, their souls, to enable them to believe. And then he implants in them his wisdom. Because the wisdom of man gains us nothing. The wisdom of our God gains us an eternity. Jesus desired that his people understand the wonder of grace, that we are saved as a gift, that we are forgiven for the sake of Jesus' sacrifice. The sacrifice our Lord made was the reason we are forgiven. And the Father forgives us for Jesus' sake. Because of what our Lord has done. And he holds it before us and he said, this is the key to understanding life. You are forgiven. It is a gift. You have been honored and uplifted and blessed and strengthened. Love what he has done for you. Their song, open our eyes, Lord. It is the only way we see. When our Lord himself transforms how we view life. It is why what we have proclaimed in our country today bothers me so much. It's all based upon our human wisdom. I have watched as the last 50 years, I hate to even admit that, but I, have, I, I remember the last 50 I remember when they took the Ten Commandments out of school, the prayer out of school. I remember, I was sitting in my second grade class. It was Mrs. Heron. She came in the room and she said, they won't let me pray with you anymore. And she was crying. The wisdom of men 
which made a separation between God and our country. When our founders, a group of men, humbled by our Lord, said, God needs to be a part of every aspect of our life. And he even used a group of men in that context who may have not even been Christian, but they held on to the principle that God had to be the center of everything that we discuss. It's exactly what our Lord is sharing with us. This gospel lesson is remarkable at how God is saying, I have yoked you to myself. He came specifically to explain this yoking because the Jews always said, you are yoked to the law, and that burden is the praise that you're giving to God, the very thing that will save you. And Jesus said, that is ridiculous. The yoking that you have, the unity that you have, is with a gracious Father. And because he has yoked you to himself, you have forgiveness and mercy and the wonder of life. We have been yoked to the cross, which proclaims that we are forgiven by God's right, God's gift, and God's determination, not ours. Never once do we come to faith because we are so wise, so insightful, and such remarkably good people. It is always under the hands of the mercy of our God. Because we have been yoked to him right here. Last year in this country, we had 1.1 million abortions. We have had for 30 years people explaining to us, 40 years, explaining to us that it really isn't a child, it is just a choice, and it's just a matter, and it's just a bunch of matter and a woman, and it really is okay because she has the right, she should have the right over her own body. That has nothing to do with anything but human stupidity. It has nothing to do with human wisdom. God shows us what wisdom is. He takes a child who comes into this world who he cherishes so much that he places his son's death and resurrection upon that child and makes that child his own. He shows us the value of a human child, every child conceived. And yet the human wisdom says it makes no difference. Since we legalized this, we've killed over 50 million human beings. It is an overwhelming reality. Because we need our eyes open as a country to who it is that we serve. Our leaders need their eyes open. We need our eyes open always to who it is that we serve. It's why Jesus says, my burden is easy. My burden is light. If you will just walk with me, I will show you the wonder of what it is to be forgiven and cleansed and what a joy life really holds. It is an amazing thing to understand what it is to be a believer. To have Christ as the one who proclaims, not only are we forgiven, but we are cleansed because it is an honoring of the Son. So the Father follows through in his promise to make us his own forever. I love America, I do. I love what we have. It saddens me the stupidity that I hear, all the arguments that I have had to deal with, and even ones that I've had to fight off by, the differences in understanding of what is simply right and wrong. But there's a weird thing that happened. You know, I thought, I think that things are really going crazy. My father, he thought the world was ending because the Beatles landed in New York. And somehow my father was kind of right. My grandfather thought everything was going away and terrible because of World War II. At the turn of the century, things were not good. 
there are drugs in every street corner. Things were written about how the, the country was going to go to hell literally at that time. In the 1840s, we had all kinds of conflict and things that were taking place that led up to the Civil War and everybody thought things were just going away. But we are Christians. We live in a country that God has given us a right to pray for, to honor Him for, to seek out His blessing and His mercy and His wonder and His guidance and His direction and to stand up for what He says is right. This is our privilege. I asked this of the other two services and I'll ask you, how many of you yesterday in your gathering had a prayer, let's see, Friday, had a prayer for our country in your gathering. Now I'm disappointed. <laughs> it is our purpose to understand that we have this gift given to us. We have our eyes opened. We know who our Lord is. We have our eyes open. We know the Lord can forgive all things. We have our eyes opened. We know that the Lord will walk with we who are believers. And if we humble ourselves before him, he will do remarkable things because he's done it over and over and over and over again for this country. And we are given the gift. We are given the gift of being a gift. We are the home of this country. We are Christians. We have the alive God, the God who's real, the God who is almighty, the God who loves us, who is behind us. It means that we should be excited and optimistic and love life. We have God with us. We have our eyes open. We know this. How can it get any better? You don't look as excited as I am. <laughs> it is remarkable, the promise of our God, and the wonder of the future, when all we have to do is humble ourselves before Him. And we know how humble He is, because He says, I am humble. That's what he explains us. He was so humble he went to a cross and he died. So that we can live. We live in hope. We always live in hope. The hope of the cross, the hope of our God, and in the wondrous blessings of life. I'm driving to Texas. So I can spend a week with my eight grandbabies, my two sons, and my daughter, and my son-in-law. A remarkable gift. We have such a privilege, such a freedom, such a goodness. We need to be the ones who are humbly on our knees each day asking God to bring wisdom to this country. Because he is the only one who has it. And he is the only one who can supply it. It is our gift to give. And by his grace, he will always lead us to give it well. May he truly bless our country. May he truly bless us. And may we always stand before this world by sharing his truth.
for Karen and for Sarah and for all the family, especially his wife. We ask, Lord, that you would be near them, to lift them up, provide them comfort, and grant them your special presence. For Sherry, that you would ease her pain, and for Kathleen, you would continue to provide her progress forward. For Ronnie, that you would give him patience and strength and the healing that comes from you alone. For Nick, that you would continue to uplift and bless him, and for Nancy, you would hold her close. And as always, dear Lord, we bring before you our military men and women, asking that you would enrich and bless them, keeping them close to you, guiding them in all that they do, to truly enable them to bring honor to your name. But we especially ask for Caleb's son, that you would be with him, for providing him your loving protection and granting him a special safety. We as your people, dear Lord, bring before you our country. We understand how many ways we have failed you. But you have given us the promise that we who are your own, who humble ourselves before you, will be blessed through you and bring blessings to others. So may you guide us, dear Lord, to be a blessing for this country, to be a voice of your truth, and be ones who truly uplift and bring a goodness to so many things that are not going according to your will. So we thank you for the privilege of living here, we thank you for the privilege of speaking on your behalf, and we thank you for the goodness that you will bring. And we this day ask your blessing upon all those who have gathered here for the Fellwalk reunion, that you would allow them to continue to enjoy and rejoice together, that you would guide them all home safely, and that you would lead them forward as your people to touch so many in this world. For all we have prayed for this day, dear Lord, we are privileged to place it to your hands. And we do it in Jesus' name with thanks. Amen. Amen. Would you please join me in the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray? Our Father, Father who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood, which has been shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. May the peace of our Lord be with you always.
Slide. Slide is prayer. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you have strengthened us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.